I am enjoying, I can't help but say it, as baseball decides, you know, we've always been super, super reluctant to change, but now bleep it. We're going to change everything. Randy Arozarena, who I love watching everything that guy does on a baseball field. He is one of these people, even in a swing and miss age, I always expect to get a hit. There are like five of them in the sport, and he's one of them. And he hit a home run the other day, and as he got around third base, he simply stopped totally, crossed his arms, and stood there staring at his dugout. That's loud. Uh, and, well, no, they plunked him the, the next two times <laughs> up. Uh, so, no, but the, these guys are going to keep pushing the boundaries on now that we've allowed, A, you're allowed to have flavor and personality, and it's not an old people's sport anymore. It can be played fun by young ethnic people. There will still be baseball thrown at a disproportionate rate at the celebrating uh, minorities, but not as much as before. And the Nationals are wearing uh, founding father wigs in the dugout after home runs, and they stink. The Orioles are drinking from a beer funnel in, in the dugout. Uh, everyone is fooling around in a way I've never seen from baseball before. But don't stop running. But you can't stop mm -hmm. after third base and just cross your arms and preen at the dugout, or the Yankees will hit you twice. When you're the Rays and you're that good, can you, though? Because they have been so good, and he's such a reason why. And what was crazy about it is they opened a new section in the outfield, and I forget what the name of it is, but it's for, you know Randy's Corner or yeah, something like that. And in his first at-bat, I believe on the first pitch, he hit a home run. Like, it's <laughs> unbelievable the way they're playing. It's amazing. And the Marlins also, a team that doesn't hit home runs, they're putting on a, a big giant hat and sunglasses and a chain every time they hit a homer. So everybody's having fun. Are you guys amazed by, over the last 13 years, the Rays and Yankees? Uh, I saw this stat over the weekend. Uh, their record against each other is 120 and 120. Hmm. 13 years. Yankees have all the money. The Rays are doing it by just being smarter than everybody else. And they're better this year. Like, they're clearly and overwhelmingly a lot better than everyone they're playing against. When you cover the Marlins and you, you watch the Marlins and you're a Marlins fan, the Rays have, have finally become infuriating. Like, it's finally gotten to the point where finally. they've been so good for so long that it's, it's so hard to look three that. hours up north and look at them and just go, oh, my God, how do you keep doing this over and over with guys where – they're recycling pitching, they're recycling bats, and over and over again, they have these all-stars, Wander Franco and Randy Arozarena, for the next 10 years. I, it's, it's infuriating. Randy Arozarena, the thing I think about is, I, ever since I heard Jeff Passan speak of him, I was like, man, I wish I could find somebody that loves me the same way Jeff Passan loves Randy Arozarena. Like, the way he glows about that player, it would, you would think it'd make me watch some Rays baseball, but it doesn't. Okay, very good. <laughs> We can go back to the Izzy wheelhouse of talking about LeBron, who over the weekend uh, said, uh, with great beaming pride, one of the best days of my life because Bronny is the first member of the James family to go uh, go to college. At this while, incidentally, and this is not something that could be should be quite so quiet. His clutch management buys an agency that has forty clients like Jalen Hurts and Odell Beckham, like their side businesses. Are, they are investing their money smartly. Rich Paul didn't go to college. Rich Paul, a member of the posse that Phil Jackson dismissed as a posse because uh, they weren't quite um, like him about how they do their business conquering. These people are putting together an empire that stretches across Hollywood in a way that has some real power to it when they're buying up agencies that have a commission fee on $250 million quarterback contracts. I feel like Mike would know this, but what's the number floating around with Bronny? Is it like six, seven million? Like seven. Seven million to get him to go to USC, which obviously is the same place where his dad plays. Like, it's it's crazy. I used He to should think, stay there all four years, right? Because uh, he, he won't make that his first – a couple years in the NBA. Depending on how good he is and how much, you know, he wants to extend that. Uh, he wants NBA to play with career. his dad. Yeah. Or his dad wants him to yeah. play with his dad. Yeah. I used to think, hey, if your dad projects to be the best player ever in this sport, pick another sport, man, because you're never going to live up. <laughs> but now I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with this version of, like, the guy, the kid who will never live <laughs> I, up to his dad because I, he's riding this for all it's worth. I love Zaz's take. Oh. Six million dollars. He should stay in school. He, <laughs> yeah, his dad is LeBron James. Right. Oh, okay. Well, but let me his, ask you. This. His dad is LeBron <laughs> where, James. Where is he going right. to have more fun? Where will he have more fun? Being the big man at USC, who's making maybe seven million dollars in NIL, 
or being with his father all the time. <laughs> his father's LeBron James. His I don't know heard what Mike James. said. His yeah. father's LeBron. With, okay, but, but I, would, I want to be with his dad all the good, time. But he's still right? a kid that wants to have a good time and wants to party and wants to be with girls and yeah. whatever. Like, he's going to do that at USC. He's not going to do that with his dad. Dad all the time throughout the entire season. Yeah, sure? no, because NBA players don't have fun on the yeah. road mm. with it, their kid. <laughs> what are you saying? Do you here? do you think they're bunking in the same room? Like I don't understand <laughs> what you think this is. It's not like when I take a trip with my dad. Like it's, no, it's, but, it's no, not. but this is how Zaslow's <laughs> imagining it. It's Zaslow's kid traveling with Zaslow, and so that's just you know we'll go to a we'll go to a steakhouse tonight, kid, and we'll get a martini. At 6.30 in New York, and then we'll call it a night. You got to make sure you're getting two king beds in the room, not just the one king bed. You don't want to share a bed. You know? They're on the road trip to play the magic, and he's like, oh, can we go to can we go to Universal Studios, please? And <laughs> they go, Is it, what do you th It's LeBron James's son. You want him to get the college experience? Do you know what Bronny's life has been like? I can't even imagine. Did you just, just say... He is going to get to meet girls in college. Yeah. Did you, you, you think Bronny James hasn't had the opportunity to meet girls? Okay, but he's going to be with his dad all the time now at his work. At work. So more girls. He's going to be with his dad all so, the time. So more girls. And women. And fun, one would imagine. Or maybe, guys. Maybe, or, yeah. Maybe LeBron, though. Maybe LeBron is... What uh, many, many years ago in their early 40s, late 30s, when Adam Sandler and Snoop Dogg came through and said, our night is now a party at a steakhouse. We don't do clubs anymore. Once you get to a certain dad age, the club experience has closed down. If I'm Bronny, too, I also question my dad, because if you go back to, and there's footage of this, in 2012, he said winning the championship was the best day of his life. And he has had he had had Bronny since then. He had had both. Well, but of also sides. also remember last year when the team was terrible. He said he was having the most fun he's ever had. That, that's right. also something people say. I remember when my daughter was born. That that day was hell on wheels. Yeah, it was not great. <laughs> it was scary. There was an emergency surgery. Uh, someone hands you a child, and you're supposed to figure life out. It's not. It's nobody's greatest day ever. It's something that you say afterwards. After the fact, like, oh, yeah, the day that you were born, it was the greatest day. No, it wasn't. That day was crap. Hell on wheels. The you're day was awful. So you're saying that hell is there, and then it just it on moves wheels. off on wheels. Sped off. Uh, it, it speeds off yeah. to what? There's to cover screen. more ground? There's to crying. the next pregnant lady. Yes. There's, you can't control your emotions. It's, a, it's an awful next day. Next room over. It's an awful day. You, wait a minute. I am being told from every corner of the universe. They're that lying. The, it's something that you're it's supposed hell. to say. It's hell. It's hell, it's hell on wheels. It's wedding day, hell. awesome. Wedding day, great. Wedding day, best day of my life. Day, I love my daughter more than I've ever loved anything in my entire life. Day she was born, not a top 10 day. Hell. So it'd be better if she just showed up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stork brought her. The stork brought her? Yeah, it would have been better. The stork yes. knocks on the door. Yes. Mikey, I got something They're for just you. rushing you into rooms. You remember? And like, oh, there's let sounds me, let everywhere. Let me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> is it possible, if we're being this kind of honest about pulling back the veil now on things that have been widely construed to be conventional wisdom, would you say now in retrospect that it was one of the worst days? One of, of the worst days. Didn't sleep. I was scared. I was anxious. It was an awful day. Really, really. One of the worst days. The worst? One of the worst days. I mean, and you're putting your spouse's life at risk for somebody you've never met. Right. <laughs> oh, and it was, well, let me tell you, it was a journey to get there, too. I mean, it, and all you get at the end of it is, like, it's honestly. More responsibility. There, there, there should Crushing be an onboarding. They just, they just let you go. <laughs> you, they take you in a wheelchair because they have to, and they're like, okay, out into the world you go. into the, the parking lot. Yeah, like. Uh, no handbook. No handbook. Nothing. Go ahead. Here's yeah. this human thing that needs you. Figure out how to feed yeah. it. Figure out how to put her in a car seat. That took an hour. Beware of the dog. It was, it was not good. It was not. It was overrated experience. Anyone that tells you that's the best day of their life is lying. This is amazing to me. I don't think we've ever had this take on the show before. Uh, Zaslow, you, Zaslo, you, you, you have kids. kids. You're sitting it out because you're afraid of your wife because you're still embarrassed from waving <laughs> goodbye to Knicks fans. And I, I was a you. bad example to my kids the other day, apparently. I'm afraid of what I can say here, and she's going to get mad at me. You know what? I'll just say it. Wedding day, overrated. Way too many family members around. Way too much pressure on you to perform well. 
overrated. Perform well? Yeah. What, you, what, what performance you gotta is happening here? You got to dance. You got to say thank you. You uh, got to go around to all the tables and say all that stuff. That's not the best. Shaking thing. hands, kissing not babies kind yeah, of that's thing. too much. Too much. And, like, if you're not a real big dancer, you got to be dancing there all the time. You got to be leading the people. It's, it's, it's too I much. don't feel like you've one-upped him, though, and, and saying a newborn that a wedding isn't cute. is overrated. A, a newborn is not cute. Oh, Anyone no. that tells you, well, she's gorgeous, they're all lying. Her face is all, like, pressed up against her. It depends. Like, their head is misshapen, Knock too. on wood, yeah, not a natural weird. childbirth. So, phew. Mm. Otherwise, no recovery from that. Where is Witty, by the way? Mike is furious at him. Uh, Izzy, one last time, go sit in the penalty box. Wow, but there's only a minute 30 left. Well, then it's a short <laughs> penalty. <laughs> Because Witty talked about C-sections, you remember? Uh, yeah, but uh, you're going so inside. That's all right. I'm not here very often. I got to try every once in a while. Yeah. Thank God, baby Juliet. She was actually one of the, the more pretty newborns because oh, wow. she was a C-section baby. I, I go there and I go to the, the, the nursery and I'm looking around like, and everyone's like, oh, she's so beautiful. And to other babies, I'm like, no, this she's not. This is a shocking take. No, the she's way, not. The way, this is perfect <laughs> punctuation, though, for you. I mean, you have been a tr like a true up and down obnoxious for an unrelenting four, three or four hours today. For you to punctuate it by uh, soiling the joy from childbirth is just perfect. It's perfect. And for the first time in the history of this show, you are somebody who's coming out against the greatest of conventional wisdoms, that it is one of the most joyous days a human being can experience. Having a child has been the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Even though it was hell. But that day was hell on wheels. Now it imagine not being his day. wife. Yeah. Come... That was also part of it, because she's like Terrible not pain. not having a great time. Let's just be real. Childbirth hurts, and she was not having. She was not really enjoying the joys of a uh, of a childbirth at the time. We were scared. There were all sorts of beeps going on. There were you never want to see urgency with a doctor. There was some of that where one nurse becomes seven. It was a scary deal, man. Don't I, if you could skip it, skip it. I really want to say at this point that. Uh it was the worst day of your life. That you don't you don't have a more scarring day. Oh, when, was, LeBron, when LeBron went back to Cleveland, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the sure, worst day. Sure. You know, there was a big uh, in Miami here. There was a big. Um, uh, um, radio uh, guy, uh, Paul Castronova. Nova. Yeah, we know and him. So many people call me Paul uh, Castronova. I was like, all right, that's my brother from another mother, so it's okay. Helio <laughs> Castro Nevs. <laughs> Oh, hell, that was impressive. It's wow. Not, no, see, this I is love it. no, this is the thing with Helio. He's been so nice, so charming, such a great ambassador for this sport. But as a Latin man, this should offend you. This is <laughs> the stars from Dancing with the Stars talk on the Dan Lebertard show. Oh, Dancing wow. champion Helio Castro Neves. <laughs> Dancing 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 champion Helio <laughs> Castro Neves. <laughs> I am insane with jealousy and fury that you don't age. Wow. You don't <laughs> age. How is it possible that you look this good? I, hey, uh, you didn't change either. I mean, you're still pretty darn good. I mean, I, I, well, a little bit some gray on the beard. It's okay, but I shave it. That's why. No, you. Uh, I can't believe. I think. I think it's because you enjoy life better than the rest of us. I think this is what keeps you young. I enjoy what I do. So basically, that helps a lot. But I do have a 13 year old kid now, and uh, wow, that. Um, and start growing some of gray hair on me now. <laughs> how did how did Dancing with the Stars change your life? You were plenty famous before then. You were famous before, you know, F1 got popular in the States the way it has, before Netflix. Um, did you cross over into another audience and reach another level of fame after that? Well, then big time. People don't actually – people think I – I'm a dancer that can drive a race car. And I said, hey, 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 that's different. You know, I the only reason I wasn't dancing with this car is because I was able to drive a race car. But it's all good because, look, I work really darn hard to get the mirror ball trophy. So I'm proud of it and I have no shame. And today, I, I, that's the only thing I retire right now. It's from dancing, but it's all good. 
Are you old enough to remember? I don't know whether this group of, in the shipping container is old enough to remember when the Miami Grand Prix was something that was right here in downtown, where they were racing those cars right all around our buildings in a way that uh, felt really dumb. I know. I, I, I wasn't here yet. Uh, it was probably early 90s, I would say. I came to America in 1996. And uh, unfortunately, they were not racing at downtown Miami. But I heard everybody remember it was great. And look what's happening now. Um, people are really excited about having a Formula One. Uh, obviously, that translates to IndyCar. And now we're, we're going for the Indy 500, which is the month of May, the end of, uh, the end of May, which is Memorial Weekend. And uh, wow, yeah, we're going for something that nobody did, ever did, so, which is trying to win number five. But you are super charming as a, vase, uh, as a face and voice for this sport. You're the four-time winner of the Indy 500, four-time winner. You rarely say anything bad publicly about anyone, but this F1 is all flash <laughs> and no substance. You're the real driver around here. Everyone else is, uh, it, over there, it's just Verstappen, let's get him the best car. Hey, look, Red Bull has more money than everybody, and you're out here doing the real racing. <laughs> look, uh, I respect a lot of the drivers, of course, but no question what you just mentioned about having the best car. Formula One is 80% the car and 20% the driver. And there are many former uh, Formula One drivers racing in the car, and they are ha they're having a hard time to even win a race. So that's to show, you know, the competition here in IndyCar. It's as as tough as, as it can be. Uh, all the drivers' teams are very very competitive. The rules keep that way. And uh, but obviously, um, Formula One they're doing a great job. Liberty Media is it's took over Formula One a few years ago, and they're. Wow, they're doing incredible with but are, marketing. But, but Eli, Helio, are you just classy? Are you, you are a better driver than all of these people, correct? You are a more skilled driver than Max Verstappen, who's winning every race. Respectfully, I would say there was few drivers at the, in the Formula One that they, they, they do a good job, including Fernando Alonso, which finished third. He came to IndyCar, and uh, he wasn't able to make the, the Indy 500 in one of the races. So shows that it is competitive. So I'm, you can, uh, I can't criticize, but you have to also be realistic. Some of the drivers, good Verstappen, no question, has a, a, a good talent, but I guarantee if you were to start nine in IndyCar, he wouldn't do what he did at the Grand Prix, passing everybody and win a race. You would have a hard time with that. Okay, so you said respectfully, not disrespectfully. Who sucks? <laughs> Well, I'm just being honest. <laughs> yeah, but he wants you to be more honest. He wants you to name. <laughs> just want, between us, he wants, we're old friends, he wants Paul. you to name. We've known each other for so long. We're old friends. Ooh. You can, you we, uh, in order to sell the Indy 500, you're on the cusp of his, history here in a way. I don't know what you're proudest of on your resume. Uh, you know, not personal achievements, but professional achievements. The thing that moves you the most about, I'm really, really good at this, and I'm better than most people who have ever done it. Uh, what is the greatest pride on your resume? Well, no question, winning number four, which you, you, you put yourself among the gods of racing, which is A.J. Foy, Rick Mears, Alan the senior. So I can't believe it. I, 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 when I talk like that, I'm, I'm right with those guys. I, I I, I don't think it's sunk in yet for me uh, how incredible what I did. The other the other day, we're just uh, only the four winners um, were able to cement their brick into the brickyard. So now my name literally is it's it's cemented into uh, into the track forever. Um, and I'm like, wow, this is this is unreal. So that's another reason that I will get that number five because I know a lot of the fans wants to see part of history. You know, this is the cool thing about sport. You want to see something that reminds you that, wow, I was able to uh, uh, witness something that nobody ever did, which by the end of this month, hope we can make it happen. Helio Castro Neves. Is that the name in the cement? Which is the name in the cement? Is it that one? That is the one. That's pretty darn good. I, 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 I should, no. You might should come to the Indy no. 500 and announce me when I was walking into the the, the driver's uh, uh, presentation, that would be a cool, 
cool way to Helio, we would have no problems in this country with immigration if everyone <laughs> if everyone was as kind as you are when people steal a part of your culture by pronouncing your name that way. Helio Castro Neves. That was the best. That was the best. That was the best version you did. <laughs> they were all terrible, but tell me, explain to me what it means to you to be a cultural representative for this sport and for your ethnicity, because uh, you've just been, honestly, for people who don't understand, obviously this man is great and skilled at racing, but what you have done to sell the idea of racing and that not everyone needs to look and sound exactly the same way, and your English has improved immeasurably. I don't know how hard it was for you at the beginning to try and fight your way through sales in your second language, but you are a proud member of uh, a real symbol for our people? Well, let me tell you, um, uh, obviously America gave me an opportunity to come over here and uh, work extremely hard. And uh, uh, with that work, I was able to get uh, observed and, and my talent was able to be appreciated. And through all this 25 years of racing, I was able to achieve some of the space and, and thank God if it wasn't for people that believe, doesn't matter, you know, the, the, the uh, color or the, where I come from and, and whatever it is, it, it, they were able to give me this opportunity. And that's what I love. It. They, they do say, uh, it sounds cliche, America's a land of opportunity, but it, it's true. You know, I, I was in Europe. I, I, I was doing well there too, but didn't, didn't go so well. So, and I'm glad uh, this country is, it, is, like that and especially where we live in miami it's such a uh, uh incredible city incredible place and uh, there are so many uh, different cultures and and again like me able to work hard and able to be recognized Helio is here with us uh, celebrating the Indy 500 all month, the month of May. It is later this month on May 28th. I want to go just rapid fire through a couple of questions with you. I have asked you some of these version, versions of these uh, before. Uh, what's the last time you got out of a ticket because somebody recognized you and said, oh, I've got to let you go. Uh, you're a very skilled driver. It was a couple of years ago. I behaved myself, obviously, and uh, the police saw it. I was like, ah, aren't you? Because of the name, you know, uh, if I have the, the announcer right now telling him my name, he will probably recognize. <laughs> but they was able to do that. And he's like, OK, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go because I think I know what you're doing. So it was pretty good. Helio uh, Castro like, Neves. Exactly. That was like that. And I tell you one thing, tomorrow is my birthday. So um, I, was, I was glad that we're here in the shows. And hopefully uh, you guys um, can uh, repeat the show right after the race because you're going to see this is going to be the new, hopefully the number, elite, elite group, the number five in the Indy 500. How fast Happy were you going? Happy birthday to him. I don't <laughs> care. Good luck. Helio Castro Neves. How fast were you going when he pulled you over? Um, to be honest, it was like a one, two, three stop sign. So it wasn't much of a, a, a speed. Because it's speed now, I'll behave. Are you still someone who will go seeking adrenaline away from racing? Or has that slowed down with a 13-year-old? No. I, I feel like I um, not only have the passion still, but I also have the experience to teach them how to drive. But I'm talking about elsewhere. Do you do anything? Have you done anything? Have you needed an adrenaline rush? Have you jumped from an oh, airplane? Oh, no. Hey, you're kidding me, man. When you get to 240 miles an hour at the racetrack, I think we're getting enough adrenaline and, and, and excitement to, uh, to keep it going. So, no, I prefer, you know... When I'm in control in the race car, that's that's what inspired me to keep it going fast. You're talking very bold. You're a bit cocky about this, I'm going to win number five thing. I don't remember. Has mm -hmm. it all gone to your head? I don't remember you being like this before. <laughs> no, I'm confident. It's not about cocky. I'm confident. I know what I got. We only, uh, we want, by the way, my car that I won in 2021 is the same car I'm going to go again. And... Um, I feel strong as ever, and that's what I like it. And they know about it. Gracias, senor. Always good catching up with you. It's nice to see you. 
Thank you, guys. Great to be here and great talk to you again, Dan. Thank you very much. Helio Castro Neves. My man, I like this guy. Can I, can I meet him? There are a couple of things that I badly want to get to here with Roy, with Chris Cody, and with Billy. Because Roy asked me a question I've never been asked before. Billy hey. had me, because of news that I got in the movie industry, had me thinking about him because I thought he would be interested deeply in two movie developments that I did not see coming. And Chris Cody has, has said something that I agree with that I ran into at a hospital recently and it made me fear for my mother's safety that the doctor was too young. The doctor, I don't trust young doctors, uh, young doctors younger than Chris Cody, I cannot trust to do surgery on my mother. I agree, I the other day had my first doctor's appointment where the guy walked in and I was like, oh, you're younger than I am. And he was just like, he had his Yeezys on. He was all clean cut. Yeezys. Yeezys. And I was just like, I need an old person in here. Stat. Yeah. Huh. I said it to him. And he just looked at me like, I'm the only doctor here. Why do you want an old person working on you? I just I just know they've been around the block. They've seen it all. What has this seen guy seen? It, they've seen illness. What has this guy seen? Put seeing? it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard. Show. Apparently not the most recent news on Kanye West. No. <laughs> do you trust? <laughs> do you trust an older doctor more because I believe this is a bias that many of us are afflicted with. But before we get to any of that, I just overheard a conversation that is at the source of what appears to be some real division at metal art media. As we try to, you know, build a company that has a lot of employees. I saw you guys run like Wolverines toward the lunch and then start complaining about David Sampson has already made cost cuts because you guys found the lunch to be deeply unsatisfactory. You guys, uh, it was, it looked like it was less expensive than previous lunches. It looked really cheap. It were finger foods. It wouldn't have been sufficient as an hors d'oeuvre at a cocktail party. It was a mini uh, One that mini I would have triangle. skipped, by the way. And just if I, t you guys weren't here yesterday. Earlier this week, we had the worst pizza I've ever had. There was a cliche was that was once Where espoused was the that there was no such thing as bad pizza. <laughs> and I can tell you, after living through the trauma <laughs> earlier this week, there is such a thing as bad pizza. And we cannot discount <laughs> at all that our meals have gotten far worse since David Sampson was in here. The meals that I saw before, corporate David Sampson, I told you guys I need his help with the business parts of some of this, and he was mortified. He was appalled as he talked about nobody serves lunch and breakfast to their employees, and look at these spreads you guys have. And you guys were saying correctly, this breakfast spread of yogurt looks a little bit cheap, and it's gotten a lot cheaper since then. Well, thank you, everyone, for the food. I, I will say that. Thank on you the to Kristen for ordering the pizza the other day, too. No, yeah. I, think Thanks, yeah. I think everyone's grateful. I don't want it to sound like everyone's complaining well, but about it the food. No, but I wouldn't be grateful for those sandwiches. That's ridiculous. Like, If you had to guess how much money is now being saved on breakfast and lunch, you guys just got, uh, you guys got something from Publix there that was tiny sandwiches that don't look very good. That, I, I will say that we did have a, a, a little a group Make a make a McDonald's run, yeah. and we had a secondary lunch, that. which we've been trying to get to, but we're not. Gonna, it's gonna be cold when we get to, but it's okay. Well, aren't you an ambassador now for McDonald's brand things? I'm not officially. That's just for funsies. I was out there just talking about, uh, you know, McD's. The bagel's back, Dan. Bagel breakfast McD's? is. In case you were wondering, yeah, McD's. That's what we you call, call it. You call it McD's? That's oh, what it's always God. Mickey D's, right? McD's influencers call it that officially. <laughs> McD's sounds like something else. <laughs> that's a yeah. different place. Is, yeah, that's yeah, completely like, different. Is yeah. Billy uh, is Billy bought and paid for? Because he was talking about the apple the the apple pie here recently. Uh, like, what are you doing? What's he happening here? He also does here? stuff with uh, that biking company. I, I, are you? Just, are you just it. selling out at every turn? Yeah, but not for money. He doesn't get That's paid, the though. the weird part. Anytime <laughs> he, I see this stuff on social, I'm like, oh, Billy, good job. You're getting it? He's like, no, not getting paid. 
No, I mean, I just like to, you know, talk about things that I like. What's You're putting some deal? tape out there. I think you are getting paid. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I wish I was getting paid. Please. If anyone's out there, McDee's, you want to talk to me? Peloton. McDee's is Please not what you think stop. it is. What, do you, what is stop. it? It's not that. What is it? I, I'm uh, not going to play this game with okay, you. Okay, let's not play the game. Let's get back to, do you think that... What's your problem with me? How much money has been saved here? These, these lunches seem insufficient. It seems offensive, but... ESPN, we didn't even have running water. There were no lunches. There were no meals of any kind when we were in the middle of the corporate machine. We had running water. I mean, we weren't bringing, like, you know. This is a paper football. Yeah. Where did, we have running, where did we have running water? We had it in the bathroom. Yeah. But we didn't have, like, a sink. No. I mean, we're not cooking. But when you guys decided to get pizza, it wasn't bad. Yeah, that's huh. true. What has happened here? You guys believe. Samson. Can we call yeah. Samson? Can we get this confirmed? Can we find out what? How much? I've had my fill of David Samson for quite look, a few days. Wait a minute, wow. uh, my, he's done enough this Mike, week. I saw. Look, look how hard this is. I saw you guys like Wolverines embarrassing me because yeah. people who work here had to tell you to clean up because of what you did to the lime, what you did to everything coming from lime, the Mexican oh. food. You guys made a devouring mess Queso's because of, so good. I mean, you got, but those that was an extravagant. It looked like a pretty damn expensive lunch. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was though. It just looked better. Well, how much are these? This is this can't be twenty dollars. Like Seventeen bucks. This, this can't be this, twenty dollars. Forty-two this was, paper This football. was bought at a Sedano's. That's been there. I wish that's, it was that's been there. Do you realize th that if I put this out and I said, "Look what Metalark is feeding me," this would look <laughs> worse like than the Fire Fest sandwiches. It looks like the F1 menu where they're selling you four hundred fifty dollars salads. That can't be real. I will say the only thing about this that, that was what a little is confusing this? is that it's unclear what it is. Like, there's this whole board that says what's there, but you, it's hard to tell what's what. Like, I, I'm looking at something right now. It may have raisins in it. It has, like, some sort of spread, a spinach, and, like, bread if with, If this like, is Price is Right, what does this cost to feed the entire office today? Price is Right, you can't go over. That one tray of sandwiches, $29.99. Whoa. No way. Wait. Under, like, under, under. 89 under. bucks. What? what? Yeah. No, it's probably expensive. That, we it's get a lot of sandwiches. No, it's a lot. It's for sure not under 30 bucks. I'm told that there's smoked <laughs> salmon in there. That, that there is not smoked salmon. I don't know which one it is. It's there is not. Blue cheese and arugula is another one. There is a, there is a smoked apple. salmon? That's what I was told. No, there's wow. there's not even imitation well, crab in this. No, I was told there was, <laughs> there was smoked salmon, but Lewis ate all of it before we got to it. <laughs> well, Lewis is a problem in this regard. Because oh. nobody's arguing on behalf of free uh, lunches and breakfasts more than Lewis. Uh, he like not unlike Roy. Roy's been known if something appears that it's free that he likes, all of a sudden he's got it in his pockets. It's physically in his pockets as he's walking mm. out the door. Goddamn right. <laughs> I've seen Roy leave with a steak in his pocket from Prime One Twelve. Delicious, <laughs> juicy, <laughs> medium. It was medium. <laughs> Um, Roy asked me today a question I have never been asked by anyone before, no matter how intimate. What kind of flusher are you? What? Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. What kind of flusher are you? Do you close the lid when you flush or do you leave it open? I am somebody who leaves the lid open. Oh, no. my God. No, I got to make sure everything goes down, just like Dan. Hold on a second. Why did you ask? You just walked up to him like that was your good morning. It was, like, what uh, kind it was of unusual. Are you today? It was unusual. It was an unusual question to receive, but I was uh, grateful for it because I actually thought about something. Oh, here's the potential for another bathroom habit that is different from others that I've never thought about before. I've never considered. Well, here's the thing. When you leave your lid open and you flush... All the water particles from the bowl oh, flies up into the bathroom. Oh, so that please. means it's going onto your toothbrush. Roy, Roy's doing it correctly. Yeah, I'm closing the lid. But are you just time. like taking a straw poll for like your own personal like curiosity? Like, why are you just walking around asking people that? Because he exposed me as someone who's doing it wrong. Yes, and content. Hmm. He exposed me. I, it's not something I've ever considered before, but I don't want my toilet juices on my toothbrush. Absolutely well, not. But what, what happens, though, if you leave it open and you flush and it didn't all go down? Like, do you wait and check afterwards? I feel yeah, like you, you just close it, you walk away. Then you're you flushing it. it. No, you lift the lid, make sure everything's down, and you're good. Mm. Nothing comes out then. What if it's still in the air? Exactly. What if it's, like, floating? The particles all stay. Exactly. They know. Do you say stay? Do you lid. tell the particles, stay, particles to stay? Stay. 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 It's a good particle. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. How do you flush? Toilet seat down or toilet seat up? What about a situation here in our bathrooms where we don't have a second toilet seat that closes? It's ah. just like the one 
horseshoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, and that's just always open. But you're not keeping your two so many particles all over your yeah, face but, right but you're now. Breathing Roy. it. I have my uh, my poop bathroom downstairs. I don't go poop. You're here. a downstairs Down. guy. We're yeah. upstairs. Yeah. The gym. Most people have been oh, going to the gym. I'm sorry. I'm so confused. Yeah, no, the pool's upstairs, right? Upstairs. Yeah, no, I'm a I'm a pool uh, bathroom pooper. pool pooper. Yeah. yeah, poop in the pool. Yeah, that's what uh, seems to be what he's saying. I don't want to. I don't want to def- defile our, our bathrooms over here and foul things up. That's a shared workspace. That that bathroom there only for number one. I do. I do uh, find myself. I'm cleaning up after all of you every time because after I pee, I feel insecure that the next Same. person's gonna see one drop. Dude. So I just start wiping down the seat. Uh, let me just say, some of y'all not reciprocating. Yeah. But hey, we got that poop puri spray in there so you can hide the odor. No, so you've used it. I haven't used it. I just know that the poopery is. Mm. Oh, you just know though. You know what poopery is. Yeah, I know what poopery is. Mm. It says it right there on the bottom. Poopery, useless little stocking stuffer. No, it's not useless. It's not useless. It will fix the scent in your bathroom. Chris Cody, I know you need help with that. Yeah, my bathroom smells (laughs) fine. But what is it? What is poopery? Good question. Something you put in the toilet before you poop, and then that makes it. Oh, I, no, I do think I it's preventative. It. I do think you that put it in the toilet. Right? I believe I, I don't believe it's an after spray. What, you, think you do the LeBron like <laughs> into the air. It's no, a you actually put it in pre. <laughs> yeah, and then it poops, and then the water. It almost like it's like a film over the water. I got right? Billy like pouring it into his hand before <laughs> he goes. And no, I thought a poopery is like the solid. The solid poopery, not spray poopery. No, it's a spray poopery. No, I know, but there's solid poopery, which is what I don't know really? what it is. Oh, oh that's wow. actual, like actual poopery. poopery. Yeah, what yeah. is poopery? He's I, talking about a brand name. Why'd you describe that? That helps poopery. you in the bathroom. Yeah. Thank you, poopery. Really. I'm not even going to begin because you've derailed. It's this. like dried flowers. What is it? I have to. Uh, I have to make an admission. Yesterday, I stayed in the studio all day because I was going to the heat game. I didn't want to go back to Kendall to come back over wow. here. So. I was the last person in this oh. studio for a while. Wow. And then I did use the bathroom for number two wow. because of that goddamn pizza. Oh. That terrible pizza. There was carrots it on it. It made me carrots. sick. Carrots. It made, I was, I, I always thought David I was pro pineapple on pizza. No not anymore. Not after what I experienced. Do you realize that I said out loud? This is the worst pizza I've ever had. Multiple times. And I was greeted as if I were Jimmy Hoffa leading the Teamsters. Thank you so much for having the courage to say what we were all thinking, Mike. Wow. Can we sacrifice Samson for the better lunches again? I- that is a way to save money. Put it on the pole, And Juju. I mean like a literal human sacrifice. Oh. Well, Put it on the pole, Juju, wow. at Levitard Show. Should David Sampson be a literal human sacrifice in exchange for us having slightly better sandwiches? Oh, look, I found, I found a hand that will actually make this sandwich look good. <laughs> there. That's a normal-looking sandwich now. Here. Let me make this visually easier for David Sampson. Oh, oh that's disgusting. What is it? This is what you've done to me, David. <laughs> this is what you've done. You 